Hi, so today I'm going to talk about a book called Manhattan Transfer by John Dos Passos. But I read it on my Kindle, so uh, the leaves of grass will provide the set piece or whatever. So, uh, I first read about Dos Passos on Wikipedia. I can't remember how, probably through modernism. But I was looking for books about New York. And his seemed to be perfect Manhattan transfer. So, I got it on my Kindle, and that's where I read it. It was published in 1925, and at that time, Dos Passos had been an ambulance driver in World War I. He had worked with the ambulances. Um, he had traveled to Spain to study and elsewhere in Europe. He came from a fairly rich family, and... Uh, which is how he was able to travel and stuff. But uh, the, the main thing I like about Manhattan Transfer is it goes from the perspective of poor characters, wealthy characters, uh, men, women, young people, old people, and I, I'm pretty sure Dos Passos was 29 when he wrote it. And I'm only... 21 now, so I don't know how accurate he was, but it seems accurate to me. One of the most striking scenes from the book for me was um, from the perspective of like a young girl, maybe like eight years old, nine years old, in her bedroom at night when it's dark, and her mom had just set her down to bed, and she sees shadows climbing on the walls, and you know, hears the wind, you know, like shrieking outside and she you know turns over in her bed and shoves her face into her pillow and pulls her blanket over her um, and I just thought that was pretty good because I remember doing that myself when I was younger and uh, a couple other scenes from the book that particularly struck me were um, I won't give away everything, but um, there's this funny bit where this guy is sitting in his lawyer's office, you know, he's a lawyer, and he's looking out the window and he sees the name of the office backwards like he would if the letters were facing outwards, and it actually types it backwards in the book and then... <laughs> It's uh, it's George George Baldwin, but read backwards, <laughs> uh, it seems like Welsh or Scottish or something, and that's the character in the book makes that comment, and that's one thing about the book that's um, pretty good is it's told some of the parts of it are told in a stream of consciousness style, which it you know Ulysses came out in 1922, so Dos Passos probably utilized some of those techniques in his got inspiration from Ulysses and I think he does it very well he'll start a chapter by giving a sort of like poetic introduction to set the scene and I he does those very well too and one interesting thing I noticed with uh, Manhattan Transfer and Sutri by Cormac McCarthy. In Sutri, he starts it off with this three-page, extremely uh, like vivid scene of Knoxville, the slums of Knoxville. Describes it in an extremely <laughs> poetic way. And... Dos Passos does that to every chapter. And both books also end exactly the same. 
So I think there's a connection there. And it makes sense that McCarthy would have read one of the better modernist authors. McCarthy seems like a pretty well-read guy. Um, but yeah, the Manhattan Transfer deals with suicide. It deals with the death of a parent. Um, it deals with uh, love relations. It deals with art. One of the characters near the end of the book ends up quitting journalism because he feels like he's becoming a mouthpiece, you know, like an automatic mouthpiece for people. So uh, he, he tries to take up writing, you know, literary writing. And uh, that's a pretty good part. If, if you're interested in being a writer, he voices a good opinion of it. And... Um, so I'll just read a couple sections that I saved on my Kindle, um, a couple of the highlights. He sighed. Elaine, I'm a very unhappy man, seeing Gus McNeil's wife. It's the first time in years. Think of it. I was crazy in love with her, and now I can't even remember what her first name was. Funny, isn't it? And then um, <laughs> one of the characters is called Congo and he ends up becoming a bootlegger and uh, one, one section which and then this is another thing Dos Passos does very well he really captures dialects and accents and like the word usage uh, unique word usage and one of them was uh, <laughs> there's just two of them are talking and then one of them talk speaks up and says funny ting a man's life <laughs> so. and then uh, here's another good section that has to do with like censorship and you know um, sort of attitudes like that gosh it's horrible he shouted suddenly what all this hush dope about sex. I'd never realized it before tonight, the full extent of the agony. God, you must have a rotten time. We all of us have a rotten time. In your case, it's just luck. Hellish bad luck. Martin used to say, Everything would be so much better if suddenly a bell rang and everybody told everybody else, honestly, what they did about it, how they lived, how they loved. It's hiding things makes them putrefy. By God, it's horrible, as if life wasn't difficult enough without that. And uh, yeah, that's, that's a really good point for me. That's how I feel about most things. People could just be honest with each other. You know, this gay marriage thing, and I live in Texas, so it's pretty ridiculous sometimes the opinions people have. Um, and then, uh, here's another one. There was a long rolling thunderclap. It began to rain hard. Jimmy rammed his hat down on his head and yanked his coat collar up. He wanted to run along, yelling sons of bitches at the top of his lungs. I think that's a feeling everyone can relate to. <laughs> and then, uh, here's one more section I... I thought was pretty good. Honestly, George, I don't know. The last I remember is craning my neck to look at a terribly pretty girl who went by in a taxi cab, and there I was drinking ice water out of a teapot in the hospital. And then I think the book really picks up near the end because I think the the main character near the end uh, is more based on Dos Passos himself, and I would say I'm I'm more similar to him than any of the characters. But he still gives a very good idea of the characters that are different from him. He can empathize really well. 
So. All in all, I think it's an extremely good book, and I plan on reading his USA Trilogy, is what it's called. Three books I started publishing in 1930. And apparently he uses a style in there that's innovative for its time, so looking forward to that. But lately I've been trying to read more contemporary works. Um, I'm reading this excellent book, halfway done, just just a little past halfway done, called The Lost Scrapbook by Evan Dara. So, and I actually learned of that one from this other um, book reviewer, I guess you could say, channel name Paperbird. He's very good. It's kind of why I'm... <laughs> Recording this book instead of myself. I have a very disheveled appearance this morning. Well, this afternoon, I guess. So, Walt Whitman is better. Well, anyway, I think that's enough rambling. It's, it's a very good book. I think it's... I mean, it's in my... I have a list on Goodreads of my favorite books, and there's ten in there, and it's one of them. So, I'm definitely going to reread it. Oh yeah, and uh, don't forget, death is a gang boss. <laughs>